All right, so here's the thing about religion, though. It doesn't work. Like, like every single claim they make about it, large or small, fails to shake out if you do the math. Prayers aren't answered. True believers aren't immune to snake bites. Being better Mormons doesn't change your skin color. But it's the same way with all their little claims, too. It doesn't make you happier. It doesn't help you cope with death. The family that prays together doesn't stay together. Yes, sure, there are some religious people that are happy and fearless and actually look forward to Thanksgiving. But statistics show us that religion has fuck all to do with it. Now, to some extent, you can get around that by not making any claims. If the Lord's ways are mysterious enough and his motivations are vague enough, you can forgive him from ever having to take any measurable action in the universe. But since failing to ever take any measurable action and not existing are functionally identical, you can't go down that road forever. The happy middle ground, of course, is to make grandiose claims, even more grandiose excuses, and then scream from the goddamn rafters about it the two times a day that your broken clock nails it. And you'd be amazed how well that works. Right. I mean, it's dependent less on the merit of the excuse as to the quality of the excuser. God has a really good reason for killing your hamster is a pretty shitty excuse. But if you offer it up with a sincere enough voice and a, you add a sympathetic tear and, you know, a lot of pomposity of office, people will spend their whole lives believing it, which is why it really fucks them up if you can't come see them every week. See, that's the dirty little secret the churches don't want to tell you. You know that feeling you get a few minutes after some pushy salesperson just got the better of you? A couple minutes ago, you were thinking that this scented microwave eye pillow was going to solve all your fucking problems, and now you're five kiosks down the hall, and you can't for the life of you remember why the hell you ever thought that. Well, whether or not you know that feeling doesn't matter because I guarantee goddamn to you that your preacher does. He knows that the minute you walk out of that church and get done shaking hands and hugging and you get back in your car, the buyer's remorse clock starts ticking once again. Now, his sales force is better than the herbally infused heat mask at the mall. So, you know, you get a little further from the point of sale before the pitch starts breaking down. But believe me, it does start breaking down. After all, you can think of a perfectly viable world that contains immortal hamsters and you're not even all knowing. Give it a few days and maybe you'll start to have questions. Of course, if you come back to church next Sunday, Preacher Man can provide you with answers. His answers are going to have flaws in them, but if he's good at his job, it'll take you a week or so to spot him at least. And by then, he'll be ready with brand new bullshit. Of course, he's had most of these customers since they were kids. He's been indoctrinating with brand loyalty since the christening. So you miss a week here and there, no problem. He'll be all right. You'll keep. Even three weeks might not be a problem, but four? Five? And by then, Preacher Man might just have to sue the fucking governor. Because your questions aren't going to keep forever, and the answers you're going to come up with yourself are not going to be as favorable to his bullshit as his would have been. Worse yet, you might start looking up your questions on the Internet, and he can't afford that. We're on the fucking Internet. And sure, he's still there. He's doing his little Zoom sermons and shit, and some people are still showing up. But the reasons people show up in church are to see and to be seen. Either they like the camaraderie or else they just feel social pressure. If you're not in church, grandma's going to notice. But grandma doesn't know if you're watching the live stream. She sure as hell doesn't know if you watch it live. I mean, people don't go to the church for the sermon. Why would they? That would make no sense. You can get infinity hours of sermon on demand anywhere. When you strip away all the actual reasons they go, they're not going to keep coming just for the bullshit answers. And hell, even if you do come for the sermons... They're going to ring hollow without the amens coming from the crowd. I mean, I think about what that tradition really is. We don't have that anywhere else, do we? I, I've been to a lot of cons. I've, I've listened to a lot of talks. I've never heard of anyone in the crowd screaming out about how correct the lecturer is, even when they're really correct. You know, but you don't have to yell out, that is a true statement when it actually is. The tendency of religious congregations to validate the preacher's claim is basically just a collective version of preempting a lie with trust me. And think about it. You watch a comedy in the theater, you laugh more than you would if you'd watch that same comedy sitting at home. Amen and preach the word and all that shit. That's the same thing for belief. You sit in a church and you listen to people scream, boy, do I believe the shit out of this? And you believe harder. Plus, in a big enough crowd, the one person whose prayer was answered can make up for the 99 who's God ignored. Consider how much harder it would be to know for sure your clock was broken if it could convince a bunch of different timelines to show up together once a week. This whole thing is an existential threat to churches, and if they did something useful, it wouldn't be. 
They need a chance to reinforce the lie or the lie dissolves. That's why they're willing to risk their own lives, the lives of their congregation, the lives of their families, and the lives of their communities to make it happen. Because, yes, there will be a lot of corpses on that one side of the scale, but anybody who's ever glimpsed the mountain will know it's not going to be enough to outweigh their bullshit.